<laughs> Talking about hate to end the podcast with Eugene Rabkin hates everything. Man, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but there's this guy called Eugene Rabkin who writes for the Style Side guys. Um, who's probably I hate to say the term hater, but he has to be the one of the biggest haters in fashion. Um, I like his writing for the most part because he's always really snarky and really funny in his writings, but he's sort of like your quintessential uh, goth ninja, right? Uh, who kind of bemoans the fact that loads of these people or loads of the, or the industry is kind of besotted with the likes of Virgil and these kind of people are in the industry. It really, really ticks them off the right, the wrong way. So he wrote this um, article recently in his website on Star Zeitgeist titled Passion Rap, Passion Parish. Jesus Christ, you can tell it's too early. Paris Fashion Week Ramblings for a spring summer show. But there's one bit that really stuck out to me that I thought was fucking snarky as fuck. That I'm going to read out to you. Mm-hmm. Can you zoom in here? I can't, unfortunately. Anyway, so it reads the following. Hopefully the uh, thing is showing up on here so you guys can see. Why well, doesn't let me zoom in? Anyway, um, what does it say here? Let me go to the bit where he was scathing about streetwear, right? Let's see. So, um, it reads here some bit about streetwear, right? Um, at Comme des Garçons that evening, a booming techno soundtrack accompanied the connection that I can't quite wrap my head around, which is usually a good thing. The press note said that Ray Kyle Cooper finds the current omnipresence of streetwear boring. Amen to that. And hence, she wanted to double down on the strong tailoring aspect of Comme des Garçons Home Plus by pushing the notion of a suit as far as possible. It's just, come on, man. This These fashion people are really pissed off with streetwear. I get it, right? Because fashion... I get it not because they're pissed off with streetwear per se, but more so they're pissed off with street fashion being infatuated with streetwear, right? Because fashion's always fashion's always fashion always plays out shit, right? When it comes to politics, when it comes to trends. Fashion is a uh, fashion knows how to kill something quicker than anyone, right? Which is interesting because fashion people always complain about the high street, but the fashion industry kills things before they even become cool. So they've been, you know, they've been heavy on this fucking athlete wear bullshit, right? Girls walking around in lycra and hats like they're going to run, but they're not. Uh, this whole urban explorer rubbish. And now kind of streetwear is the thing that they want to do. You know, that you remember that whole like um, mountaineering bullshit that everyone had. And now this, you know, streetwear stuff has been kind of probably uh, beaten uh, to death. So, you know, they kind of need to move on to something um, different. And now everyone's kind of saying tailoring, right? It's opposite streetwear because it involves some sort of skill as opposed to like making a hoodie. Whatever, cool. Um, but it continues. Um, but Rujan Rabbitkin doesn't end there. He continues some bit where I thought was quite funny where he says something along the lines of... Yeah, this guy. And so it was a very uneven week with ups and downs, with ups and downs, with for whoever in discernible reason highly anticipated debuts from Virgil <laughs> and at Louis Vuitton and Kim Johns, both bland as expected, and mostly with people trying to figure out what the hell men's fashion exactly is today and what exactly they would be doing. Not that there was much to figure out out here. Fashion has become a thoroughly postmodern anything goes thing. It's gotten big enough to let men do their thing, sneakers and white socks or suits or whatever, quote unquote, whatever <laughs> seems to be uh, the operating word. Even show attendees largely stopped caring. I've never seen so little effort put into what people wore to shows. The Rick Owen trials were notwithstanding, but those are the hangers-on. Jesus Christ, everyone's getting thrown bullets, right? And as, as for the professionals, it looks like our long in, in inverting days, traversing Paris, hours of waiting and the pressures of deadlines, we have finally learned that what the masses have learned a long time ago. Comfort is king, though it really is too bad. It's a weird statement to make. I kind of get it, right? The fashion glitterati are pissed off because there's these new kids on the block who have kind of entered into their kind of uh, secret clubhouse and have kind of taken over it and now become the quote-unquote, um, what do they say, the, the authority, the new leaders and stuff, that example. I'd say the only, the only point, the only kind of lesson to be learned from this was say, I think for anyone that's involved in the industry now who's kind of asserted themselves, got, some, got themselves a position of power, of influence, I'd say you would be, don't go in there and rip up the playbook and kind of revolutionize everything. Try and go in there and build upon what 
the legend of the past have done before and also correct some wrongs that these guys have not done right um the fact that you know they weren't they weren't that inclusive they weren't willing to have different voices um tell a different story in fashion not because of you know for diversity for diversity's sake but in terms of i like fashion that um is a mirror to society right or it mirrors this customer base or it mirrors people that are interested in it right that's the issue i had with veteran Mar when they has when they had like completely all white cast <clears throat> on their runway it was like i get it they were all based in this whole it's really small paris fashion studio they had this really small little clique that they were rolling around it that was mainly you know um middle eastern people and people from you know soviet bloc and people from paris and stuff but for the most part the people that I saw wearing Vetimo that were very interested in the brand were Asian and black people, right? They were the ones that were fucking really ride or die for this kind of clothing. And it was kind of, you know, it kind of did a bit of a disservice to your customers who are wearing it not to have them represented on the runway. I don't necessarily mean go out and get plus size models that are going to wear Vetimo. I don't care for that sort of stuff. But just get people in that look like people that actually wear your clothes. That's all, right? And then when it comes to making the clothes, it would be nice also to have people there who uh, represent, who can kind of give a different angle or present a different voice uh, to what's going on in the current, in the streets or in the world in general. Uh, but for the longest time they had in fashion, there used to be just a one narrative or there used to be like a rap narrative, right? Someone, a guy from Belgium who's very influential who would kind of tap into his version of youth culture and kind of relay that to the world. But it wasn't a, a version of youth culture that resonated with everyone, right? But now we have this new guard of people coming in who are sort of taking over and becoming the new guard. I think it's their responsibility now to not go in and tear up the rule book, not go in and knock down statues and start all over again from scratch, but for build on top of what's already there and also not repeat the lessons or the wrongs of the past, especially the kind of articles that this Eugene guy is writing, right? It's like he's, I've always, I've always, I've always kind of had a position that you should, you should kind of operate in the world as it is, as opposed to wishing the world be a way that you want it to be and i guess eugene is kind of bemoaning the fact that we're, we're living in a world we're kind of it's kind of like the post norm core world right where f he says comfort is king right you're seeing more tracksuits and slippers and all that sort of shit happening nowadays people want to be comfortable people want to wear sweats to shows um there was night squad i saw the other day on gq about uh the resurgence of shorts right people are going to shows in shorts again like um showing dirty legs and mismatching socks and shit which is probably a bit of a no-no in terms of paris fashion week because people always go dressed up so there is kind of like a a lowering of what it means a, a kind of a smoothing out of what luxury means right no one's walking down the street in uh bar main sequin jackets anymore right people are kind of want to look as dumbed down as they can even look at even look at the um uh bar main creative director i forgot his, his name kind of sets my mind at the moment but even look at the difference between him what he wears now he's do you know what i mean he's kind of like fairly uh relaxed fit wearing his clothes now he's not wearing those kind of tight blazers with tight jeans and desert boots anymore he's kind of a bit more relaxed in his approach everything is kind of changing that direction of course with fashion everything comes in a cycle things will come back around again anyway but for now i think you know embrace what's around you and there are brands out there still doing great things but when you're a eugene and you and all you see is all you see is the heyday when you kind of got involved in it when it meant that much more to you and then you see these guys coming up who don't necessarily have the same education the same backgrounds the same experience that you're used to it can come rub you up the wrong way and just to put you know just to, just to be brutally honest maybe the stuff is not as good as it was in the past but that that isn't really the point the point is we're living in a now this is what the present is and you know enjoy it for what it is man like it's still it's still gonna it's still gonna foster something brilliant anyway because something brilliant always comes along right uh something amazing is always gonna come along um no one saw veteran coming along especially those first three seasons were just fucking out of this world no one saw that stuff coming along and it did so something else will come along again and replace it but for now enjoy um, I thought that was just interesting uh, thought um, in general, but I don't know, man. It sucks to be a Eugene, isn't it? Imagine that. Imagine you just go to a fashion show and all you see is all the shit stuff. You don't see anything good. You know what I mean? You just you just longing for the days when Margiela was fucking reigning supreme, and no one saw his face. Like, dude, it's 2018, man. Get with the program. <laughs>